within a single window search facility. Developed by IIT Kharagpur, this initiative aims at making the world of knowledge available to the readers at their fingertips. To introduce the system of digital library to us, we have amongst us Dr. Vignesh Swarnamohan, Chief Strategic and Outreach Officer, NDLI. To formally welcome him to this gathering, may I call upon Srimati Deepthi, Faculty, Department of English, Bhavan's Newsprint Vidyalaya, Velu. Libraries store the energy that fuels the imagination. They open up windows to the world and inspire us to explore and achieve. Respected guest of the day, Sri Viknesh Swarnamohan, Chief Strategic and Outreach Officer, National Digital Library of India. Beloved Principal, Srimadhi N.A. Vijay Lakshmi and Vice Principal, Srimadhi Liji P. Prasad. Invited guests, teachers and my dear students. A warm namaste to one and all. Reading is an act of civilization because it takes the free raw material of mind and builds castles of possibilities. Books have the power to transport us to new worlds and different times. But at this hour, when the world undergoes the pandemic COVID-19, it is advised that we should stay home and be safe, which has adversely affected the availability of books through libraries. In such a situation, digital libraries and publishers have offered more and more free content and thereby creating personalized collections so that people can continue to read and learn without disruption. Indeed, as the demand for credible e-resources surges, digital libraries have emerged as vital pathways to high quality e-books, journals and educational content. And to make us aware of the usage and importance of digital library, we have amongst us Sri Viknesh Swarnamohan, who is currently the Chief Strategic and Outreach Officer, National Digital Library of India. He is also the founder of Brilliant IAS Preparer, a mobile-based low-cost training solution for the civil service aspirants. He has more than 14 years of research development and program management experience in the domains of information and communication technology for development, education skill, e-governance, social entrepreneurship, public policy, health and rural development. He has managed large development projects like National Digital Literacy Mission, Cybergram Yojana, e-inclusion, IT training for rural, SCST Women Beneficiaries, E with your Innovative Project for Rural Women, Women Digital Literacy Project, Child Labor Family Linkages Projects, Financial Literacy and Investor Awareness, Legal Literacy, Tele-Ophthalmology, Digital Diagnostic Kits, and Telemedicine Centers. He has also conceived and implemented many innovative ICT-led policy initiatives for promoting inclusive growth in rural parts of India. He holds a Doctor of Philosophy from the Center for the Study of Law and Governance, Jawaharlal Nehru University, New Delhi, with a Master's in Public Management. His research interests include public access to technology, technology-enabled learning, governance, public policy, social enterprise, development, and so on. He has been actively participating in various international forums like United Nations General Agreement on ICT 4D, Internet Governance Forum, E-Asia, Internet Telecommunication Union, and E-India. Sir, I cordially extend a hearty welcome to you. I also extend a hearty welcome to our principal, Srimadhi N.A. Vijayalakshmi, and Vice Principal, Srimadhi Liji P. Prasad, to this gathering. Let me also extend a warm welcome to the librarians and teachers from our sister institutions. Let me, lastly, let me extend a heartfelt welcome to all my dear colleagues and students to this webinar on digital library. With the hope that this session would be an eye opener for many of us, I conclude. Thank you all. Thank you, Deepthi. Now may I request our principal, Srimadhi N.A. Vijay Lakshmi, to kindly address the gathering. Madam, please. Thank you, Gayatri. Distinguished resource person, Dr. Vignesh Mohan, 
Chief Strategic and Outreach Officer, National Digital Library, India, and Vice Principals from our sister institutions and teachers from sister institutions and our own school and dear students. Today, I am really happy that we are able to hold such a webinar, that too by a very distinguished person, Dr. Vignesh Sornamohan. The journey of a lifetime starts with the turning of a page. And it's the turning of the page that marks the beginning of wisdom to all of us. And the taste of reading books we develop right from the younger age. And the best thing and the unique thing about books is that they let us travel without moving our feet. By just reading the pages of a book, we can travel in our mind to different places. We can learn the culture, we can learn the geography, and we can learn about the history of many lands which are so away from us. And it lets us into the minds, mindset of people who have lived before us. We are able to understand how people thought in those days and how people are thinking in these days too. And because of it, our imagination flies and we are able to do much better than uh, actually we would do without reading books. It opens our eyes. We are able to see the whole world in a uh, completely new perspective. And blessed are those who have the uh, interest and ability to read a lot. And we lose our heart and mind in the books that we read. At the same time, we find our own identity through the uh, concepts that we have taken from the books that we love. And as people would say, friends make uh, uh, you, the books that you read also makes the person who you are today. And everyone who reads books, they are able to be very broad-minded, understand the points of view of others. They are able to cope up with new situations because they are able to understand the humane nature of different people. And reading of good books is like a conversation with the finest mind of people all around us. It was told by Rene Descartes, the famous mathematician. And I am happy that today we are having with us a very distinguished person to talk to us about the National Digital Library. Because as you all know, books are very costly. It is very difficult to buy books. And one has to depend on library to read the books that he wants. But then now due to this crisis, definitely going out to library is also out of question. And the books that we want may not be available in the local library that we have. So we, we have always heard about the digital library. But we never, I think many of us would never have thought, never have thought about approaching a digital library. But as the saying goes, necessity is the mother of invention. Today we are at a, a, at a situation where we are trying out new digital platforms and we are trying our technical skills due to the pandemic that has imprisoned us inside our four walls. So today, it is very essential that we learn about the National Digital Library and how we can use the National Digital Library and the vast depository of knowledge that it is having inside, uh, inside the net. And I am happy that we have got Dr. such a person as Dr. Sornamohan, uh, Vignesh Sornamohan among us to explain to us how we can approach, how we can access and how we can make use of the digital library. I am extremely happy that we can have teachers from our, our sister institutes also. And I am very happy to, to inform everyone how happy we are to have this program today. And I'm very thankful to Dr. Vignesh Sornamohan. And I'm sure, I'm sure this program is going to be an eye opener for everyone. And maybe in the days to come, we will be using the digital library to our best to make use of it. And as many teachers are here, I am sure they will take this knowledge to their classrooms and share this to the students also 
and i am very very thankful to dr vignesh swarnamogan once again and i conclude my speech with uh, uh, informing okay. all the participants today okay. let this be an eye opener to everyone and let let us be able to use this digital platform to our best of the ability and thank you very much for this opportunity thank you ma'am for your thought provoking words now let's lend our ears to the informative session by our resource person sri vignesh swarnamohan over to you sir thank you ms kaitri uh, respected principal vice principal uh, ms minakshi uh, uh, very thank you to all of you for uh, inviting us uh, for uh, hosting this uh, session we are very happy uh, because this is a second session i'm uh, conducting it uh, especially for schools uh that is where uh, now we are focusing on so uh, without wasting much time i will just uh, start the presentation <laughs> so my humble request to all the participants kindly mute your mic kindly uh, do not unmute um is my audio clear and is the presentation visible if yes kindly put it in the chat box okay thank you anish yeah thank you so let's uh, start so as uh, uh, your colleague uh, introduced uh, my name is dr viknesh i'm part of the national digital library of india team and today what we are going to look at is uh, we are going to look at six uh, different things the first and foremost is why ndla and uh, who is this part and what kind of content we have at ndla how to access uh, ndla uh, what is the difference between google and ndla and how to operate ndla club in your own institution so these are the six things that we are going to uh, learn in today's uh, session so let's first see why ndla so look at this uh, map of india this is as per uh, 2011 uh, census this is uh, uh, this depicts the literacy rate of the country as per the 2011 census except very few states uh, your own states kerala goa tripura and mizoram uh, where the literacy level is above uh, 90% as per the 2011 census majority of the states if you look at uh, the light shaded uh, states the literacy level is less than 75 percentage and this is as per the official uh, statistics and you can very well imagine the actual uh, ground level realities in these uh, states so uh, this is one um, fact and we have an another fact which says in india every month at least 1 million people that is 10 lakh people are turning into 18 years of age every month that means they are getting into an age of getting into the higher educational uh, stream and if india has to address this uh, young population who are getting into uh, age 18 india needs to set up at least six universities and 270 colleges every month at least for the next 20 years so that uh, we can actually address this educational uh, requirement and uh, so uh, some of you may agree with me setting up uh, is uh, important setting up uh, physical infrastructure is important and it's uh, easy the most critical part is sustaining these institutions because uh, the sustenance of any institution is the major uh, challenge so the government of india though it's uh, setting up more number of uh, physical uh, infrastructure uh, it is also looking at alternative uh, digital solutions so that it can uh, handle the requirement better so you might have already heard of uh, nptel swayam swayam prabha gyan ndli all these are supplementary and complementary learning resource uh, materials that the government of uh, india has uh, been has set up now the next part is uh, why
am i audible now because there is, seems to be some network issue at my end am i audible okay just give me a moment i think there is some network issue Uh, am I audible uh, now? There seems to be some network issue at my end. Okay. Sorry about it. Okay. So now let's look at why uh, National Digital Library of India is uh, required. So if you look at uh, uh, many of the educational institutions in the last uh, few years, especially the last five to seven years, the financial allocation and the human resource allocation for libraries has been um, drastically reduced. So there are uh, multiple reasons to it, and uh, this this has uh, this uh, many institutions when uh, the student intake is less or when the financial constraints are there, the first budget they cut is the library budget. So I'm not sure how uh, suitable it is for uh, schools, but in most of the higher education institutions, that is the status. And the second uh, major challenge that has been uh, seen across uh, many of the institutions is many of the libraries don't have adequate uh, physical infrastructure for staking of resources. So I've seen uh, even in Kerala, some of the, the libraries where they don't have uh, space to stack the resources, they have uh, like, uh, the new arrivals are uh, still lying unopened on the corridors of the library. So that is uh, the another uh, challenge that uh, is facing the physical libraries. And then in the libraries, in the physical libraries, we also have challenges of accessing the same resources by multiple persons at the same time. Suppose if you imagine there is a very good uh, book and uh, if you want to access it, maybe your friend may not be able to access it. So that is another challenge that uh, the physical library has and apart from this uh, you might uh, come across cases like uh, the book has been stolen or it is being uh, hidden by some student or damaged by the uh, readers so these are say, challenges that are being faced uh, uh, by uh, in the physical libraries uh, situation so the government of india looked at all these aspects and they said uh, they wanted to give equal access to knowledge resources to all the institution, whether they are uh, uh, cash rich or cash poor institutions, they want to give access to every uh, institution equally. So they wanted to democratize education. So they started this, uh, conceiving this idea of National Digital Library of India in 2014 and 15. And uh, it was launched as a pilot program in 2016. And it was dedicated to a nation, uh, NDLA was dedicated to the nation on the 19th June, 2018 by the then MHRD Minister Sri Prakash Javadekarji. So now let's look at what do we have at uh, NDLA. Uh, just give me a moment. I think uh, the presentation is not sh moving. I will reshare. Thank you. 
போலாம் so at ndl live what we have is uh, primarily the metadata metadata is uh, nothing but basic information about a book or a article say for example if there is a book the title of the book who is the author number of pages and uh, who is the publisher so the basic information so that is uh, what that is called metadata we at ndl live we primarily store only the metadata so there is a reason for it i will uh, come to that part in a little while and then uh, you can see uh, so this this is how uh, ndla operates so what we do is we primarily work with content collaborators say for example if uh, say kerala university or uh, kerala uh, case uh, uh, what kerala state uh, scrt scrt has uh, some not digitized books and they want to share it with all the uh, learners of uh, ndli readers of ndli so what we do is we help them in setting up an idr idr stands for institutional digital repository okay think just give me a moment i think there's some severe network issues here okay uh, sorry i've changed it to an another uh, network so i hope uh, now it is better actually there is severe connectivity issue uh, since the past couple of days so i have been uh, switching over to at least three networks uh, to meet the requirement so i hope uh, now uh, the presentation as well as the audio is clear okay thank you so i was telling you say for example if uh, kcr ak uh, kerala's uh, scrt has some thousand non copyrighted open source digitized books if they want to share it with uh, the entire readers of ndli so what we do is we help them in setting up an idr idr stands for institutional digital repository and suppose if anybody wants to access say for example if a researcher from delhi wants to access the book of uh, uh, kerala scrt books then uh, he comes to ndli he searches for the resource and then uh, if he wants to access this resource from kcrt we redirect him to uh, the website of uh, kcrt and then he gives access directly to the researcher so this is primarily done to avoid the copyright violation issue okay so i think uh, if you uh, during the discussion time if you have questions we can discuss about the copyright violation part now Uh, as i mentioned we primarily work with content contributors we don't create content or we don't digitize content we primarily work with already existing uh, partners who have digitized the resources right and we have uh, collaborated with uh, so far 306 content uh, contributors and you can see some of the logos uh, who have uh, partnered with ndli now let's look at what type of content we have at ndli so computer science we have closer to 1 crore resources philosophy and psychology 5.4 lakh resources religion 2 lakh resources social sciences 45 lakh resources language 1 lakh resources natural sciences and mathematics 84 lakh resources technology 1 crore resources the arts fine and decorative arts 4.5 lakh resources literature and uh, rhetoric 7.9 lakh resources history and geography 6 lakh uh, resources so if you add these we have 4.8 crore resources as of today and what are these content so these contents are ranging from uh, say a faculty publication or a thesis a phd thesis or an mphil dissertation or a masters project a, a presentation video lecture audio lecture class notes question paper term papers assignments assessments solutions uh, e books Uh, open access journals data sets manuscripts so you name any form of uh, reading or knowledge related content they are all available at ndli 
and access options so if you uh, uh, when you search you will see the list of uh, uh, like search items uh, showing up uh, one below uh, one by one and below you will see this icon there are five different access options that are available and uh, the first one you can see the green lock with open simple that denotes uh, open access which means you can download the entire uh, full text resources and similarly this ndl resources this is also full text uh, resources and if you uh, uh, and then third one is limited access fourth one is subscribed and the fifth one is restricted so these are the five different access options that are available at ndli so kindly remember these things because in the uh, feedback form you may have questions from um, these part uh, the this part of the presentation as well so kindly listen to it carefully so there are five different access options as i mentioned open ndli limited access subscribed and restricted and uh, so these can be located by uh, seeing below every search uh, item you will see this icon the access option icon followed by language and the content type so if you look at uh, resource uh, type wise content article dominates the list with uh, three crore resources or articles followed by books which are 64 lakh resources reports are 12 lakhs law acts are about 8.7 lakhs law judgments are 8.7 lakhs thesis is about 6.5 lakhs video lectures are about 3.77 lakhs and then access uh, right wise content so as i mentioned there are five different access options out of which open and ndla uh, access options give the full text uh, resources full text resources means you can actually download the entire resources and then use it for educational purposes and you don't have to pay a single penny for accessing these resources so open resources are about 2.7 crore resources and the ndla resources are 77.94 lakh resources and if you add these two resources you will get 3.5 crore resources that is 73 percentage of our resources are free for educational and research purposes and you don't have to pay a single penny for accessing these uh, resources and ndla resources are meant for all the age groups starting from the school going children to college going youths working professionals academicians researchers entrepreneurs lifelong learners so anyone who is interested in learning so we have resources for everyone now let's look at how to access ndli so accessing ndli is uh, very simple so what you need to do is uh, go to google or any search engine for that matter and then search for national digital library of india and the first url you get which is ndl.iitkgp.ac.in or ndl.gov.in both the urls work so you just have to click on the url once you click it will take you to our home page so this is how our new re revamped home page of ndli looks like so at the center you will see so this is called the search box so this is where you need to put your search keyword and then click on search then you will be able to see the results so i will show you how it works so before we get into this i will show you what are the other options so you have browse option you have search button and you have language and you have login option and also at the bottom our team has actually classified the resources uh, into various educational levels so if you look at study at home button you will see school related content cbs examination preparatory content engineering content science humanities literature management and law so these are content classified during this pandemic by our technical team and also we have a research repository on covid 19 so various scholarly publications data sets documents and videos are collated in this repository and also we have featured collections like birth centenary of satya jitre on this day in the history person of the week topic of the week so these are some of the uh, this is how the home page looks like suppose if you want to search so you just have to enter the keyword here and then click on search so now uh, now i searched for a topic called pedagogy of mathematics right so now for teachers uh, what they want to do is to prepare for a mathematics they need to understand the 
pedagogy how the learners learn uh, for this so if you put uh, pedagogy uh, then it will uh, pedagogy of mathematics i searched for a pedagogy of mathematics and i wanted it from the source of asim premji foundation so now to use ndla you need to remember two important things the first thing is you need to know the right search keyword okay without any spelling mistake and the second important thing you need to remember is the various filter options so i will show you some of the filter options uh, in a quick uh, while so now i searched for a topic called pedagogy of mathematics and i got 1030 333 resources from asim premji foundation alone and then i searched for a topic called pedagogy of science okay this time i wanted the source from uh, the content from a source called teacher tube so teacher tube is a channel wherein they have created a lot of uh, learning materials for teachers which they can use it for uh, their classroom uh, lecture and then i searched for a topic called open and distance education uh, so suppose i wanted to know what are the theses available on uh, open and distance education so you just have to go to learning resource type and then choose thesis then it will show you it shows 57127 thesis available on this topic of open and distance education suppose if any of uh, the teachers who want to pursue their phd and uh, if they want to do it on a topic called open and distance education and they wanted to do a literature survey of what uh, what the content of that is available they just have to go to the search and then search for the topic of their uh, interest and then click the learning resource type as thesis so now i will show you what are the various filter options that are available access restriction is one filter author is an another filter subject category educational degree difficulty level educational level file format language learning resource type and source so there are 10 filter filters on the left and on the right hand side in the desktop application you will see a filter called content type so here you can see the various icons like audio video uh, text so these are some simulations also might be there when you search and then i searched for a topic called micro teaching and this time i wanted only full text resources so what i did was there is a filter called access restriction and i chose only open and ndla i got 7104 results on this topic of micro teaching and then i searched for a topic called algebra and calculus and i wanted the results only from uh, the source of khan academy many of you might be aware of khan academy and uh, khan academy videos are available at ndli uh, algebra and calculus and then i went to source i chose khan academy i got 10000 results on this topic of algebra and calculus now we will uh, quickly get into uh, this uh, tab of uh, study at home so which is available at the home page and suppose if we want to know what are the contents that are relevant for school children and the cbse examination preparatory you can just click on this school then this page will open so here for especially for school children you can see the various video lectures for school children right so you can just click on this video lectures and see what are the type of content that is relevant for them and then we have je preparation materials and we have simulations activities self assessments and various study materials and we also have books from cbsc ncert and other state boards and we have books for general reading like especially from national book trust so you can uh, further narrow down uh, the results by clicking on the relevant button and then let's we will i will show you some of the featured content that are for um, primarily for school students so we have uh, ncert all the ncert books and we have books from national book trust books and also we have start board books like andhra pradesh gujarat jammu and kashmir kerala madhya pradesh maharashtra odisha punjab rajasthan tamil nadu telangana and tripura so we have the uh, state uh, board books as well and these are some of the specific contents that are relevant for school children so there is something called exam fear so here this is primarily 
uh, they have school content for class 6 to 12 and also for need preparation materials and english grammar so exam free fear has content for class 6 to 12 and also need preparation and english grammar and then we have exploratorium uh, which is a scientific funhouse and experimental uh, laboratory for school children and we have like tedx we have uh, tedx so this is this has animated videos and uh, lectures on ideas that power teachers and students right and we have Khan Academy videos I uh, already mentioned about it and uh, if for computer science we have a source of spoken tutorial so for computer science programming languages we have video lectures on various computer science programming uh, that is called spoken tutorial and then we have a resource from National Science Digital Library so we have uh, high quality online educational resources for students and teachers on science technology engineering and mathematics so in short we call it a stem and we have uh, the physics classroom that has uh, tutorials simulations and concepts uh, uh, builders on physics for students and teachers and then we have our own homegrown product that is called uh, ndli tutor so this is primarily for je main and advanced preparation materials and solved papers we have closer to i think 10 years of solved papers available at uh, ndli tutor and we also have stems so that is another uh, je preparation materials that is available and also we have simulations so this simulation is powered by pet simulations on science and mathematics so that is also available apart from this we have other contents like uh, ck12 astropex go lab uh, pratham story we were to teach engineering stem curriculum for k-12 science in school and also teacher tube so these are some of the contents which are specifically meant for school students so if you want to access uh, content primarily for school students what you need to do is just go to the home page i will show you again uh, so this is the home page and you just have to click on uh, school then you will be able to see the uh, contents which are relevant for school students suppose if you want to know the cbs examination preparatory especially for plus one uh, 10th and 12th I will, you just have to click on this if you click on this cbsc examination preparatory then it, this will take you to this slide this page so this is how the once you click on cbsc examination preparation content this is how it will take you so here you will see class 10 and class 12 okay so now let's see suppose if you click on class 10 it, this is how this will open so you can see content uh, relevant for class 10 CBSE content, accountancy, biology, business studies, chemistry, English, economics, computer science, home science, information and informatics practices, mathematics, multiple subjects, geography, Hindi. So you have all the subjects, almost all the subjects listed here. So you just have to click on and then see the content uh, further. And also uh, you can see, so this is for uh, class 12. So this is uh, for class 12. So accountancy, biology, business studies, chemistry, geography, English, economics, information, informatics practices, physics, physical education, social science, sociology, Urdu, psychology, political science, Sanskrit. So you can see these are the various subjects for class 12. Now I'm going to show you how to open a resource from uh, NDLA. Suppose I search for a topic called research methodology and I want to open uh, this first resource. So you just have to click on this resource. Once you click, this page will open. Okay. So here on the top, on the left top corner, you can see content and metadata. So you just have to first click on metadata. Once you click on metadata, this page will open. This is called metadata. Okay this is the title research methodology the source is coming from lovely professional university the content type is text publisher is excel books private limited file format is pdf so if you see this resource useful for you then the second thing you, you need to notice is access restriction so since it's an open resource that means you can actually download the entire resource and use it for educational purposes and the third thing you need to notice is here you need to check whether you have logged in or not here you can already see I have already logged in. My name is reflecting here, Vignesh Sonomohan. 
then in that case what you need to do is if you want to download just go here and click on content then the entire uh, document the 338 pages of content will get downloaded into your desktop or laptop or mobile phone whichever device you are using you will be able to download it in case if you have not logged in okay then it will uh, when you click on content this page will come it will ask you to please log in to view this content so there you need to click on this login button once you click on that login button this pop-up window will appear okay so here you need to enter your if you are already registered and if you remember your password then you just need to enter your email id registered email id and password then enter the captcha and click on login then you will be able to download the results imagine you registered at ndl like couple of months or couple of years back and you forgot your uh, password but you remember your registered email id in that case what you can do is you can recover your account by clicking on the account recovery button just click on account recovery then this pop-up window will appear here you just have to enter the registered email id and then click on submit once you submit you will get a verification or account recovery email just follow the process mentioned and then come back and enter your registered email id and reset password and then login imagine you never registered this is the first time you are hiring hearing about ndli and you want to know are you this the uh, you want to use it uh, for the first time then you click on this register button then the registration form will open okay i will talk about it in a little while uh, you just have to follow the fill the form and then submit it once you submit you will get a verification email follow the process and then you will account will get activated suppose if it's a video lecture this is how the video lecture will open within the frame so as i mentioned to you earlier for using ndla you need to remember two important things the first thing is you need to know the right search keyword and the second thing is you need to know the various filter options so here I'm going to talk about some eight important filter options that we have, which may use be useful for you. The first filter option that is available for you is access restriction. Suppose if you want to open only the full text resources, then you need to click on open and NDL. Then you will only get the full text resources. That means you will get the entire book. And the second uh, filter option is author. So you searched for a topic and you want it from a particular author. Then you just click on the, suppose if you want the resources only from Wizang, just click on Wizang, then you will get the resources from Wizang. And the third filter option is subject category. So this is classified as per the DDC's uh, Dewey Decimal Classification Format. So you just have to, depending on the search keyword, you need to choose the relevant subject category and then narrow down the fil uh, results. And the fourth uh, filter option is the file format. Suppose if you want only the PDF files, click on PDF and depending on the uh, relevant uh, file format, you can narrow down the results. And the fifth filter option is language. Depending on, so we have closer to the content of the contents are available in closer to 300 uh, Indian as well as international languages. Okay, so you can uh, narrow down the results based on the language of your choice. We also have content in uh, Malayalam, but not much. But uh, to begin with, we have very less uh, content. At least we have. And then learning resource type. So there are some, some 60 different types of learning resource type that are available at NDLI. And then source. I, I told you there are 306 content sources that we have partnered with. All the So suppose if you want the content from Bangalore University, just click on Bangalore University. So depending on the source from where you want to con the content from, you can narrow down and the eighth filter option which is available only in the desktop application uh, that is content type so you can see it on the right hand side in the desktop application so now i'm going to talk about the language interface the entire ndla language interface can change into your own mother tongue so for doing that what you need to do is go to the home page on the top you will see language button so just click on the arrow and then you will be able to see the various filter so you can choose the language of your choice so there are about 10 languages that you can choose from it's uh, hindi bangla gujarati marathi kannada uriya tamil malayalam and SME. so malayalam is also recently added so you can you can use the entire uh, app as well as the interface in 
Malayalam as well. So now I am coming to the most important part that is the mobile app. So now nowadays uh, many uh, many users finding the mobile apps uh, very handy to use. So our mobile uh, entire application is available on Android as well as iOS. So if you are using an uh, Android phone, you can go to the Play Store and then search for National Digital Library of India. So when you search, this is how the NDLI logo name and the publisher name looks like. So if you see all these three, you just click on install. Once you click on install, the app will get installed in your mobile phone. Okay. And similarly, if you are using an iPhone, go to the store and then search for National Digital Library of India. You need to search the entire, put the entire name. If you put NDLI, then you will not be getting the uh, app. You have to put the entire name. So now I'm going to show you how to use the NDLI uh, Android app. So once you install the app, just click on uh, open the app. This is how the home page of NDLI mobile app looks like. Okay. Now, if I want to search a topic, what I need to do is on the top, you will see this search icon, this uh, lens icon. No? This is the search icon in the mobile app. Just click there. Then the search box will appear. Okay. So I wanted to search on a topic called Uttar Pradesh. So I entered the Uttar Pradesh uh, using my keypad and then clicked on search. I got 41,573 results. Now I want to narrow down the results. So what I have to do is in the desktop application, you had the filter options on the left hand side and on the right hand side. But whereas in the mobile app, this is available on the right bottom corner, this orange color icon. This is the filter option in the mobile app. So just click on this uh, orange web icon. Then on the third screen, you will be able to see the various filter options, which we saw on the desktop application available on the top. So you can actually scroll down to see the remaining filters. So now I wanted to uh, apply a filter called source Aligarh Muslim University. I want the content only from Aligarh Muslim University. I went to source and then I chose Aligarh Muslim University and then clicked apply. I got 199 results on this topic of Uttar Pratesh alone. So this is how you have to use the mobile NDLI Android mobile app. Similarly, you can use the uh, iPhone uh, iStore app also. So now I'm going to give you a small activity. So I hope uh, many of you have installed the uh, NDLI mobile app. In case if you have uh, installed, very good. In case if you have not yet installed, Kindly install the NDLA mobile app from the Play Store or from the iStore. And then I want you to take five minutes of your time. Uh, am I audible? Okay. So uh, I want you to do a five minute exercise. I want you to install the mobile app, NDLA mobile app, and then search for the topic of your. Uh, study or uh, subject of teaching or your interest in the mobile app and then tell me which topic you searched and whether it is useful for you or not. So I'm going to give you five minutes. It's 6.53 in my system. So we will uh, resume the session uh, remaining presentation by 6.58 and your time starts now. In case if you have uh, installed the app, very good. If you have not installed, kindly install the app and then uh, search for the topic of your subject of study or subject of teaching or subject of interest and then put it in the chat box whether what topic you searched whether the content uh, is relevant uh, for you or not so your time starts now
So Ms. Shanti has searched on augmented reality and uh, kindly let us know whether you found the desired results. If yes, kindly. Uh, okay, so she searched on uh, designing augmented reality interfaces. Ms. Deepa Chantaran searched on William uh, Wordsworth, got so many informations. Okay, good. If you are using a desktop, kindly search it on the desktop application as well. That's perfectly fine. We want you to just explore ReNDLI and see whether it is uh, making any sense to you. It's useful for you or not. Anyone else who has uh, searched for the topic? Sir, can I speak, sir? Yes. I was searching for Norton's anthology of English poetry. Okay. But uh, I don't know. Maybe I did not do it the proper way. Okay. I got white. I got other anthologies. Oh. Okay. Okay. So maybe I think you need to apply the right filters. Then you will be able to uh, maybe subject, yeah, maybe, uh, subject filters. Then you may be getting. Uh, uh, so I can see other people okay, like. Okay. Uh, okay. Content from ACM, ACM Digital Library, Chetaka Stories, BC Mahanlobis. Yeah, I, yeah. I'll try, sir. I'll try, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Sure, sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, some of you have uh, explored, but I request or uh, encourage all of you to search for the topic of your interest and then see if it's useful or not miss lena has put uh, fisheries Spapna yes sir uh, sir i got it i got the norton anthology of poetry third edition okay thank you thank you so much uh, madam atmospheric science animal kingdom genetics boher model very good very good so uh, this is just a beginning that uh, you have started uh, exploring I want all of you to, after this session, take out uh, some five to ten minutes of your time, and then imagine what are the topics which you found it uh, found very uh, difficult during your uh, classroom session, or uh, you find it very difficult to uh, assimilate, and then search for the topic. 
and i'm sure you will find a video lecture or a presentation or an audio file which may be uh, useful for you to understand the concept better so kindly take out your time and then uh, search for the topic of your uh, interest and if you find it useful kindly spread it to at least uh, some 100 people whom you are uh, in touch with they may be your students or your fellow friends uh, family members colleagues so kindly share it with them uh, that would be a, a wonderful service that you will do for this nation sharing knowledge is the best gift that you can do for the human kind so now we will uh, resume the session so is the presentation visible now okay yes sir okay thank you so now we are going to look at uh, what is the difference between google and ndl right any we all use google and google is the best uh, tool that we have got to understand uh, various topics but let's see how uh, google and ndl are different uh, using this uh, simple example so imagine there is a girl called Payal who is studying in class 8 and her language of uh, uh, her native language is Hindi and she wants to understand uh, magnetism from the uh, subject of uh, physics and sim similarly there is a guy called Shamik who wants to pursue his uh, PhD position on this uh, topic of magnetism. Now both of them have gone to Google and they search for the topic called magnetism. And both of them got the same results. They got 1.89 crore results. Now, both of them came to NDLI. And then I, they searched for the same topic called magnetism. And they got 11.16 lakh results. Now, what Boyle did was, she applied two filters. One is uh, educational levels. She chose only 5th to 8th standard. And uh, the second filter she applied was language Hindi and she got only eight results relevant for her. And whereas what uh, Shamik did was he wanted only career and technical papers and he got 290 results. So now let's see what is uh, the major difference between Google and NDLI from this example. So before we get into this, we need to understand how Google functions. See, Google is a brilliant tool. It does its job brilliantly. We, do, we are not a competitor to Google or uh, any uh, search engine for that matter. But Google has its own limitations. So what are those limitations we need to understand first? So the moment you put uh, the search term called uh, magnetism, what Google does is it goes around the entire World Wide Web and wherever this term uh, magnetism is there, it fetches the results. That's brilliant. But in this process, what Google can't do is it can't distinguish whether this is coming from an authentic source or an unauthentic source. Whether this is relevant for educational or uh, non whether this content is educational content or a non-educational content. Whether it is a real information or a fake information. Whether this is relevant for Shamika or Payal, it can't distinguish. It treats everyone equally and it brings the results uh, equally to everyone. Whereas at NDLI, every content, each of the content are coming from trusted educational partners. If you look at our partners, all the 306 partners are primarily working in the educational domain. They are universities, research institutions or publishers. And they are all curated educational content only. And the second one is you can actually narrow down the results using various filter options. And uh, in uh, Google also, there is an advanced search option that is available. But uh, NDLI, we have educational specific uh, filter options that is the difference between google and ndli and also you can modify the search based on uh, the content type and also the government of india has procured uh, national licensing from a couple of publishers for uh, giving it to the indian citizens at free of cost now i'm going to talk about how to operate ndli club so before we understand how to operate ndli club we need to understand what is the primary objective of NDLA club. So some of you may agree there is a, a, a increasing trend of uh, declining uh, the culture of reading, right? And the reading takes place in different formats, and uh, there are a lot of distractions that have come uh, in front of us. So the government of India has been encouraging uh, 
the educational institutions uh, to promote the culture of uh, culture of reading and also spread the knowledge resources of ndli to every indian citizen so that is the objective to an objective of ndli club so for that what you need to do is identify at least one student from each class and one faculty member from each department with a librarian or a faculty member or an nss coordinator as the ex officio secretary and principal as the ex officio chairman of the club or maybe you may already have a readers club so if you have it just convert that into a, a ndli club so and then once you form the club what do you need to do is you need to uh, submit an registration form for ndli club uh, once you submit that uh, form will come to us so this is how the ndli uh, uh, club registration form looks like this is a temporary arrangement that we have done soon we will come up with a new format so this is how the existing form looks like you just have to fill the basic information about your in institution and then submit once you submit this form will come to us and then we do a back end verification of your institution and then we issue a certificate of registration that is valid for one year so this is how the certificate of registration looks like so within that one year you need to do two steps the first step you need to do is register all the students and faculty members within 30 days of receipt of this certificate of registration that is the first exercise that you need to do and the second thing is you need to conduct at least 10 reading or knowledge related activities within the remaining period so now i'm going to talk about how to do the registration part the first part which we have uh, seen under the ndli club so for registration you have two options one is either you can do an individual registration which can be done directly by anyone or you can do a bulk registration and we encourage especially for uh, educational institutions be it schools or colleges to go for bulk registration so that in future uh, soon there may be a circular from uh, the mhrd to all the schools and colleges to start ndli club and then um, uh, show the progress of uh, reading in their own institution so that time the bulk registration option will be useful for you so for doing the bulk registration what you need to do is so currently i am conducting an awareness session for you similarly you conduct an awareness session for your own ndli club members and then they in turn go back and train their own fellow students and faculty members about ndli and then once uh, they are uh, shown the basic awareness about ndli then collect three information from them their personal email id first name and last name okay and uh, once you collect it just put it in an excel sheet format so this is how the excel sheet looks like in the first column you have to put the enter the email id and then first name and then last name and then this excel sheet should be sent to our uh, official email id which is ndl hyphen support at iit kgp dot ac dot in with a copy to my email id which is vignesh at ndl.gov.in or vignesjnu at gmail.com so once you send this uh, list to us we upload it on the, our bulk uploading uh, system and then each of those uh, registered users will get an automated email with a uh, account activation link so they have to uh, click on that url and by default their email id is the username and uh, they will be given a temporary password each of them will be given a unique temporary password after entering there they have to set their password and then they can start using ndli without having to pay a single penny and uh, for uh, suppose if you your family members or your own uh, children might be interested in re registering at ndli they can also do this so uh, for that what they have to do is go to the ndli home page on the right top corner you will see this login button so just click on this login button then this pop-up window will appear at the bottom right you will see this register button so just click on this register button then ndli registration form will open so this the first there are four fields which are mandatory full name email id password and confirm password these four details are mandatory enter it your date of birth gender state city educational role language institute name and then you have to enter the captcha and then choose this uh, terms and condition and click sign up once you click on sign up then you will get a verification email in your uh, account just activate it the entire registration process will not take more than five minutes okay so now we will come to the the next part which is the activities that can be conducted under the ndli club 
So the activity that you may want to conduct could be a lecture series or a quiz competition, a storytelling session, a go fish session, film screening, drawing competition, role play, writing competition, make a space or debate. So these are just indicative list of activities. You can also come up with your own uh, uh, reading related activity or you can also conduct an inter college uh, comp activities or, uh, or inter school activities or competition as well. So these are some of the activities being conducted under the NDLA club uh, across the country. And also we have uh, some incentives uh, uh, planned for the NDLA club. So which uh, the MHRD will soon uh, circulate it uh, to the uh, educational institutions through proper channel. And now uh, before we get into the feedback uh, part. I just uh, want uh, you to uh, if you have any specific questions kindly uh, ask the question Kindly put it in the chat window Thank you, sir. Yes, thank you I'm I'm sure that your session was quite informative and useful to our students and teachers amidst this pandemic. I believe that our teachers and students will certainly use the NDLI website to their benefit and also pass on the information to others. Thank you so much. Now the stage is set for open forum. A reminder to the participants, you may put forth your queries in the chat box as it will be addressed by our chief guest. Okay, so if there are not much questions, so then uh, I think we can go ahead with the quiz come feedback form. Is it okay? Sir, a few questions from uh, our one of our primary teachers. Okay, sure. Sir, the question is Does NDLI provide reading materials for primary students? Okay, um, I think you need to explore. That's why uh, there was a part of uh, exploring uh, the USL to see because uh, there are 4.8 crore content. And uh, I'm sure we may have the content which are uh, relevant for uh, primary class students as well. So there is a question from uh, Mr. Bala Shankar. How is the NDLA different from other digital libraries? Uh, Mr. Balashankar, I think uh, there are at least some, uh, to my knowledge, there are at least some uh, 100 uh, digital libraries that are available across the globe. But uh, NDLA is unique in the sense they are primarily built for Indian uh, audience. And now we are primarily sourcing content which are relevant for uh, Indian uh, students. And uh, we, are, we are also, I won't claim ours is uh, the perfect solution. We are also evolving. So when we started, we had very limited uh, uh, content and today we have 4.8 crore resources, but uh, uh, we are also on each uh, day we are learning something new and we are adding something new. So I won't say it's the best. I won't say it's the worst. It's 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 one of the decent initiatives that the government of India has uh, done. Okay, then the, is it possible for our te uh, teachers to share the contents of India which we will teach them on? Yes, perfectly fine. As long as you give uh, proper citation to the resources, that is perfectly allowed. You can, uh, all the resources that are available at NDLA are uh, free and open resources. So you can uh, use these resources for educational and research purposes. There is a question from Ms. Priya Nair. Regarding the subscribe resources, how do we go about accessing those? Uh, Ms. Priya, what uh, for subscribing uh, resources, it has to be done at the institutional level. We don't facilitate any financial transaction between any uh, entity. So as long as, so as far as possible, we want to do it. Uh, we want to give only access to the free resources. So 
i hope i have addressed your uh, query in case if you want to like access those subscribed resources then you need to get in touch with your institution or the institution that has already subscribed these uh, resources okay thank you so i've just thank you sir the, for your responses yes so i've just entered the feedback form url in the chat box so i will just uh, enter it again so you just have to click on the feedback form url i will show you how the feedback form uh, looks like just give me a moment since closed now sir just give me a moment i am just opening it up Sorry, my system is very slow. I'm just trying to establish the connection. But I can see responses uh, coming already. Hello. Yes, sir. So I can see the responses. Okay. now it is open so kindly check now it is open so kindly check uh, this okay so thank you so kindly fill the feedback form within next uh, say 45 minutes by 8 uh, o'clock we will uh, close the feedback form so kindly uh, fill the feedback form and if you have any queries uh, regarding ndli so kindly you can uh, send me an email so i will give you my email id in the chat box so i've just entered my uh, email id in the chat box so kindly copy this uh, feedback form url Uh, so that after the, this webinar is closed you have access to this uh, url for submitting the feedback so only for people who submit the feedback they will be issued the certificate of participation so uh, over from uh, my side over to ms sugayatri okay thank you sir showing gratitude is one of the simplest yet most powerful thing humans can do to each other to formally accord our gratitude may I call upon shrimati smita lakshmi faculty department of english havans new spring vidyalaya vellore one minute um, gayatri sir i yes, think it would be good if you enable your video so that everyone can see you then uh, sir sir dr vignesh actually there is severe connectivity issue at my end so that's why i have turned off my camera uh, i thought it would be good if uh, everyone can see you uh, sure sure i am just trying to talk okay, i thought at least for a minute uh, if it sure. can be uh, uh, okay sir okay. sure
I hope my uh, camera is turned on now. Invite me the air is with news print media level for the vote of thanks. Yes. Respected resource person, Dr. Vignesh Sarnamohan, Chief Strategic and Outreach Officer, NDLI, Principal Srimadhi Vijayalakshmi NA, Vice Principal Srimadhi Liji P. Prasad, other invited guests, librarians and teachers from our sister institution, institutions, participants and my dear colleagues, a warm namaste to one and all. It is true that libraries store the energy that fuels imagination. They open up windows to the world and inspire and contribute to improving our quality of life. But at present, as the world responds to the pandemic COVID-19, most of the governments have closed the physical libraries, considering the safety of its stakeholders. At this juncture, the digital libraries play a pivotal role by offering more free content and help people access books and continue to read and learn without visiting the libraries. So it is also imperative to know more about the services rendered by NDLI and how and who can access it. With that purpose in mind, our school has arranged such a wonderful interactive session. Now, let me move on to the pleasant task of proposing the vote of thanks. First of all, let me take this opportunity to thank our resource person, Dr. Vignesh Sornamohan, Chief Strategic and Outreach Officer, NDLI, for this wonderful session. Sir, you have opened the vistas of innumerable sources available at our creatives. We are truly indebted to you, sir, for providing us such a vital information about NDLI. It was really a fruitful session, and we assure you that we'll make maximum use of these resources. I, on behalf of everyone present here, take this opportunity to thank you, sir, from the bottom of my heart. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot. Now, let me express our deep sense of gratitude to our principal, Vijay Lakshmi ma'am, and vice principal, Liji ma'am, for their guidance and unstinted support in all our endeavors. Thank you. I must mention our deep sense of gratitude to Srimadhi Meenakshi PG, our librarian, for her, for her enthusiasm in coordinating such a session, which is a real need of the hour. Thank you, Meenakshi Miss. I must. Now let me extend our thankfulness to the invited guests, the librarians, and the other teachers from our sister in institutions for their participation and support. Thank you all. I also extend my gratefulness to my colleagues and students of class 11 for their active participation and enormous cooperation. Thank you all. Once again, let me thank each one of you. Thank you. Thank you, Smita. Looking ahead, it is evident that the use of e-library will continue to grow exponentially in the period of lockdown and social distancing. But still, as Victor Hugo said, even the darkest night will end and the sun will rise with the hope that we'll overcome this pandemic and revisit our library soon, but still continue to use the NDLI platform. We come to the end of today's webinar. Thank you all for your valuable participation. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. So kindly copy the feedback form URL and uh, submit your feedback uh, before eight o'clock. And with this, I'm going to uh, end this uh, webinar. Thank you once again, all the uh, participants of uh, this webinar.